everybody, it's update time. I'm going to go over some of the things that y'all have helped me figure out what they are from our previous videos and talk about them right now. Are y'all ready? Let's do it. Here we go. Well, unfortunately, I'm not the best at identifying a lot of stuff I find. I love finding it, but I'm not the best at identifying. A couple things you're going to say, man, he should have known that, but that's the way it is. Um, we're going to start off with the first thing right now. James Burrell and Howard Perry helped me with this one. I found this right there. First one, I think in the video, y'all hear me say, maybe I was thinking maybe the bottom of a gun, like a handle to a gun where that would go like that. I should have known, y'all always said, is a, um, a sword pommel, and I should have known because I got one. Not thinking. When y'all said sword pommel, I said, well, look, heck, I found this sword here. Uh, with, with actually with Aqua Chigger. Y'all might know him. But I found that when I was hunting with him one time. I said, well, let me go grab that sword I found and see if it matches up. And check this out. It's an exact match. I can't believe I should have known that. I got one right here at the house and didn't, didn't pick up on it. But yeah, that looks like almost a, a perfect match to this right here. So that is definitely a sword pommel. I appreciate it, James and Harold, for letting me know and getting me straight and had me hook, look at my old one. This one's pretty cool. This one actually had wood in it and a little bit of gold wire going out when I first found it, but it was kind of all decayed and uh, didn't last. You can still see a little piece of the wood down in here. That's pretty cool there. All right, moving on. Uh, this button right here. Y'all saw me find this. It's got an eagle on it, but it had letters on it. I've never seen one like that. Uh, it had NHDVS on it. I, I couldn't read all the letters until y'all told me what it was. Uh, but... Uh, Bottle Hunter, just like his name was, B Bottle H U N T R said, uh, "Eagle button is a disabled veterans button. Post Civil War letters are N H D V S. National home of disabled veteran soldiers." And sure enough, I looked that up and it matched up perfectly. In fact, there's a couple online. Here's one right here. There's one right there. You see, National home of disabled veteran soldiers. NHDVS. Here's another one here I found on the internet that matched up. And here's mine, but you can't read some of the letters, but you, if you look at it on a microscope, you actually see it matches up that perfectly. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, let me know about that one. Um, I'm just going to kind of bounce around here a little bit. I just found this uh, not long ago, and somebody is, it was a, one of the smoker pens, vapor pens on the beach, and um, I couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, you know, I see them all the time, don't know, and I, I put the name of the person that showed it to me right here in the thing. I didn't have it right here with me. But they say this is a THC, not a standard to, um, tobacco type. So that's got some THC in it. And somebody else had mentioned on that thing, too. you got to watch out because if a cop catch you with that, it might not be legal. Mine's in the trash can and gone now, so I don't have to worry about it. But I appreciate the input on that. I'll know from now on. I better not hang on to that too long. May get rid of it faster because that was full too. Somebody did not mean to drop that, I'm sure. Um, the next thing, this little button right here. Alec Boreas helped me with this one. Y'all remember this has got the eagle, 13 stars. I said, oh man, yeah, that's Civil War. But then when I flipped it over, it had the little screw back on it. Come to find out, he, uh, he showed me a picture here. And it would, this would not be on a button like on a shirt. This would be like a button like on a hat because they put it through there like that. It matched up to right there. And then put something on back to hold it on. So this is not a button uh, per se off of a uh, coat or something. It's made for like a hat and sick to put on there right there and have a, a tack on back to hold it in there. Uh, he says it bleeds a button that goes on World War I era USMC visor cap similar to this one. That's the one he showed me. He said he dug an Army one before. Certainly not a collar disc as Marines don't have them with just the eagle and the globe. The only collar insignia they ever had during World War I and World War II were the EGAs. And if you look closely, this is certainly not an EGA and it only has an eagle and the anchor. Something you usually see on World War I and earlier. So at least World War I, it could be earlier than that, potentially. But that's what that is. Appreciate that, Alec. Um, Lewis Webb Told me about this. I had a lock that said RFD on it. And I apologize for not having the lock here because I give a lot of my stuff back to the farmers and owners. So some of the stuff I have, some I don't, the actual objects. Anyway, uh, Lewis told me RFD is a, a mail lock. Uh, 
anyway, I, I looked it up. Rule free delivery. The service that began in the United States in the late 19th century, so late 1800s, uh, to try to get mail out to people in rural areas. Back in that day, they didn't have the postal service coming anywhere you live because people lived out in the, in the wildernesses. So uh, those people did not get delivered to them. They had to actually come in to the um, post office or something somewhere and get their mail. So they started this back in in um, uh, eight. Late 1800. It was not until 1893 that they pushed through legislation that mandated the practice. So they had locks to keep um, stuff on there and all. So um, anyway, um, that's what that is right there. Rule free delivery right there. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, this right here, uh, toe tap. Uh, I think Rachel Thompson said that is definitely a heel tap. So I, I was thinking that what it might be, and she said that's definitely what that is right there. Rachel's really good at identifying stuff. I appreciate all the help. Rachel's helped me on many, many items in the past. Tell me what they are. Uh, this right here. Y'all saw me find this. Right in the Civil War field, and uh, Stephen Hurt sent me an a email, actually. It seems you found a working horse harness check hook. And he sent this right here, and look at it. It matches exactly. I mean, that's an exact match. Uh, which some call a reins guide, upper portion, either rubber coat or they were solid hard rubber. This image from a catalog print in 1907, but this has got no rubber on it and no, it's not made of rubber, it's definitely brass and no rubber's ever been on it. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe this is the exact same one, just over the years they've tried to improve it, add rubber to it and all. I'm thinking this is still Civil War time frame, same, same style and all, just a Civil War time frame because of where it was found at and all the Civil War stuff around that right there that I found. Um, Alright, looking around, let's see one other thing here. Y'all saw me find these silver dollars at the beach the other day. And I just wanted to kind of go through what I actually did with those. Um, I actually took those, I read online, Googled it of course, you can find anything out. Uh, soak them in water for a few days get so you don't see any of the brownness in them. Then after that, got a 50-50 mixture of like um, Clorox and some water, let it sit in there. And it takes those old nasty brown looking uh, sand dollars and makes them pretty white sand dollars. And uh, after that, you mix a 50-50% of Elmer's glue and water. And then you uh, paint it onto them. I did a couple coats. And now, because they're really fragile. But once you do that, it makes them so they don't crack off. And you know, they did a little bit before I even picked them up. But uh, now they're pretty, pretty solid now. I mean, I, they could still break on my hand, I'm sure. But... They will certainly last a lot longer now since I've got the Elmer's glue soaked into them and hardened. That's some tough stuff. But anyway, I, I like those. They turned out pretty good, I think. I don't find those very much. I, I like those. All right, I think that's going to wrap that up. Just a quick update. Uh, I appreciate everybody uh, commenting on my videos. Let me know some of the things I'm not sure of. I know a lot of y'all spent time looking over some of it up. And some of y'all know off the top of your head where it is, and I don't. So I appreciate uh, letting me know that because it's, it's good to know, you know, some of the stuff because I'll save it in different areas or I'll, you know, if I, when I give it to the owners or farmers, I can tell them what it is. So, yeah, it kind of helps me there too. So I appreciate everybody uh, coming along with me on my adventures, help me out on identification, and uh, we're going to be going on some more adventures. So stay tuned. Don't forget to click like, comment below, share, subscribe to the Gig Mass. And thanks again for keeping me straight, man. Y'all got to help me keep straight. All right, thanks for coming along.